Hi, this is Stephen from Core Electronics. I'm here to talk to you today about MakeCode for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. MakeCode is a great coding option for educators and beginners in code because it doesn't take any actual typing. All you need to do is drag and drop blocks of code that snap into each other and you can get started coding right away with little or no programming knowledge at all. And it's still quite a versatile program with a lot of different options for coding within it. If we take a look at the interface, we see that um, MakeCode's actually browser-based, so you don't need to have any software on your computer in, or in order to run it. You just have to have any web browser, it'll run on a tablet, and it'll even run on a smartphone if you want. Um, MakeCode's made by Microsoft and has a few different supported boards, but we'll go to the Circuit Playground Express on makecode.com. MakeCode's great as well because there's on their website, they have quite a few tutorials that walk you through step by step which block to grab and where to drag it in order to make a, quite a few fun little projects that only take the Circuit Playground Express board itself and little or no extras. Today we'll go into new project. We'll make the code that I showed in our overview tutorial video of the Circuit Playground Express. Just to give a uh, explanation of what we have on the screen here is we have the workspace on the right. We have a column in the middle with our various different code blocks that we can add to the program. And we have our virtual interface on the left. The virtual interface is great because it allows you to test your code as soon as you've made it in the program and see the results on screen without having to transfer your code to your board every single time in order to see if it worked. So just to get started, we have a forever loop that starts on the screen and everything that we want the program to run will need to be within a loop. If it's not within a loop, then the program would just run at once and then stop. So whatever's in the forever loop runs continuously while the board is powered. If we, so what we want to make is we want to utilize the buttons on the board. So we'll make the left hand lights light up when we hit the A button. We'll make the right hand lights light up when we hit the B button. So a great way to do that is a while loop. So we'll go into loops and drag that inside our forever loop. See how it snaps into place? So right now we have a forever while and the, the logic is true, but we want it to be while the button is pressed. So we'll go into our inputs and we have an option here for button A is pressed and notice how it's a diamond shape, much like the true, so it fits in that spot. So while button A is pressed, we'll grab the show ring command so while button A is pressed, it will show this ring. Currently it's all red, but you can click on the color wheel to change the color of the lights that it lights up. I've just deselected the right hand to be not colored, to be off, and then the left hand's red. So if we go over to our virtual board, we can click on the button and see that it lights up red. The only problem now is that we have a show the red lights but it has no command to turn off so it just continuously shows so we'll go into our light menu options again scroll all the way down to the bottom there's a clear and we'll drag that out and put it under the ring so now when we do quick momentary presses of the button it'll show the red lights and then turn them off afterwards um, if you've got a nice block of code that you want to essentially copy. One of the nice features within MakeCode is the duplicate. So you can right click on it and duplicate it and it'll give you an exact copy. We can drag that beneath this while loop, change our options from button A to button B and make the lights the color we'd like for button B. 
And now, once the virtual board refreshes, we have red on a button A click and blue on a button B click. So just to add a little bit more interactiv interactivity to our board, let's make the lights all light up in a rainbow animation when the board is shaken. So the as far as shaking goes, there's we could go into inputs and there's some loops within the input columns. So these are a little bit different than the loops, but they're functionally the same in that whatever's in this bracket will run continuously waiting for waiting for a command or waiting for the the shake to be detected and while the board's powered. So we'll put this on loop in there, on shake, and the light animation we want will be a rainbow. So there's a show animation option here that puzzles in place. And we'll select the rainbow animation from the possible animations and set the time to two seconds. And again, just so it turns off after two seconds, we'll, we'll scroll down and grab clear and put it beneath it. So this is a fun little um, addition to our program. So once you add an element of program that includes the accelerometers, the virtual board now tips and leans because it is capable of detecting being tipped in any direction and you can have your code react to that and then the shake button appears. So, so that's what we want. So if we hit the shake button, we see we've got a rainbow animation now. So now just to add uh, another element to our shake animation is a little bit of sound. So the circuit playground has an on board speaker. So if we go into music, we can select play sound and we'll put that within our on loop on the shake. So on the shake, we could do a magic wand sound effect to go with our rainbow. So we'll say play sound, we'll select magic wand. Now when we go back to shake on the board, we'll have a magic wand sound to go with our animation. So if we click JavaScript, we've got, we can see the actual code of what we created with the blocks, which is a good learning tool. And if you were going to teach JavaScript as a programming language, it could be quite useful to be able to switch back and forth between the two. And you could just type all your code straight in JavaScript if you want and not use the blocks at all. So the last thing we want to do is get our newly created program onto our Circuit Playground Express. So in order to do that, we go to download. In the bottom left corner of the screen. And save our UF2 file. So the UF2 file is just the format that the make code uses, and that's that's your program that you that you'll put on the on the Circuit Playground Express. So if we go to our downloads folder now, we see our Circuit Playground, my files untitled.uf2. And the next step is to connect the Circuit Playground with a micro USB to the computer. When you plug it in initially, it may enter into bootloader mode automatically, but if it doesn't, the reset button's right in the middle. And by pressing the reset button, you may need to double press it. It will show a red ring of lights, which means that it's going into bootloader mode and green when it's ready. And if we look at our computer devices and drivers now, we see C play boot drive has appeared. That is our Circuit Playground Express. And all we need to do is drag our just downloaded .uf2 file, so our program into the play boot, 
boot drive, and now we're ready to go. So if we look at the board, we have the left button press for the, the A button press for red lights. We have the B button press for blue lights. And if we shake it, we have our tone and the rainbow animation. And now if you want, you can power this off of a small battery pack so it's mobile for a project or you could power it off of a lithium battery as well. So now we have, again, off of battery pack, the red lights on the A press, the blue lights on the B press, and an animation and a sound on a shake. So that's all we have today for the make code with the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. Stay tuned for more, more tutorials about the Circuit Playground Express make code and other ways that you can program the Circuit Playground Express, such as CircuitPython and Arduino. Thanks.